You do the soul. It's time to do secrets. Whoops, let's go. Welcome back, you guys. So we're gonna do a quick review before we start on a new lesson this week. So last week we learned all about cycles and we specifically looked at two important cycles, the life cycle and the water cycle. We'll start over here with the life cycle. So we learned that there's five main stages to every life cycle and every organism, so every plant and animal, goes through the same life cycle. It just might look a little bit different depending on what organism you're talking about. Every life cycle starts here with the birth stage and then we move on to growth, adult, uh, reproduction so that this cycle keeps going in a circle and it keeps going over and over again and death is how you leave the life cycle. So every organism at some point in their life experiences death. But because we have reproduction, this is a cycle that keeps on going. There's a way that you can remember the life cycle and that's by using this acronym BEGARD. So BEGARD stands for birth, growth, adult, reproduction, and death. So if you ever are having trouble remembering the five stages of the life cycle, just think BEGARD. Okay, so then we talked about the water cycle. And in the skit, we had the two characters. There was the one with the spray bottle, which was precipitation, and then the one that had the sun, and they were evaporating that water away. They were evaporation. So those are two stages in the water cycle. The water cycle obviously is a circle, and it keeps happening over and over and over again, and this has been happening for as long as there's been water on Earth so for millions of years. And we start here with evaporation, so that's when the water droplets turn into gas and rise up into the sky, and then they condense in condensation, so that's when they kind of come together as clouds, um, and then when those clouds get really heavy, they empty out back onto the ground through precipitation, which can be through rain, hail, mist, fog, snow, sleet, any of those. And then eventually, when they're back on Earth, they're stored somewhere. And we went through a bunch of different places of, of where water is stored. So it can be stored underground in groundwater, it can be stored in lakes, rivers, streams, puddles, it can be stored inside of us, inside of any animal, um, or also inside of plants. And we learned a little chant to help us remember the water cycle. So let's take our hands, and remember our fingertips are going to become water droplets and they're gonna start down low. So we start evaporation, condensation, precipitation, storage. Huh. And that huh reminds us that it's a cycle and it starts all over again. So I think you guys have a great handle on cycles. So we're gonna move on and talk about our new lesson for today. Stay tuned. Today's secret is powerful and wonderful. If only I could find out what it was. It's got to be here somewhere. It's not in my pockets. It's not on my back. It's not in my hair. It's not behind the camera. It's got to be one of these colors. Can you guys see it? Is it on the window pane? So because cycles are so important, today is a bonus secret. We get to learn about another type of cycles. I have a feeling that this type of cycle is really important. Soil cycle. In cycles, the building materials of life are used over and over again. So where should we put it? Cycles is already taken. We could just take this one down, but then we might forget about it. Soil does start with an S, not like cycles, how cycles starts with a C. Maybe there's a way to stick it underneath like that. Voila! We got a bonus secret today. So soil cycles, the action for today goes like this. 
soil cycles. In cycles, the building materials of life are used over and over again. Did you do that with us? If you didn't, stand on up. This time, we're gonna do it like we just heard the funniest joke we've ever heard. Ready? <laughs> Soil cycles. <laughs> In cycles, the building materials of life are used over and over again. <laughs> Welcome to Cooking with Millie and Max. I'm Millie the Millipede, and this is my assistant, Max Bacterium. On today's show, we will be cooking up an old family recipe, Deep Rich Soil Surprise. Soil Surprise is one delicious crowd pleaser, and it feeds thousands. Everyone from grass to shrubs and moles to moss love it. I, used it. I even served it to some picky trees the other day. Oh great, now let's get started. First, let's add some organic ingredients. Wait, wait, wait. What does organic mean? <laughs> organic means anything that is or was alive. It sounds like the word organism. Remember, that means any living thing? Oh, so something organic is something that is or was part of an organism, and our ingredients are leaves, bones, bark, Yum. trees, pine cones, Yep. And, uh, yeah. Perfect. Now let's throw them into the pot. Uh-oh. Millie, we don't have a pot. Never fear! Fungus is here. I am perfectly adapted to hold soil in place. <laughs> Check out these great thread-like roots. These are amazing for keeping soil together and creating a home for little decomposers like us. Oh, fungus, you're such a fun gal. Thanks for the help. Okay, Max, we have our organic ingredients. Now let's add our inorganic ingredients. Inorganic. Is that uh, the opposite of organic? Exactly. Inorganic material is anything that was never, ever alive. Bad news. Uh, we're out of inorganic ingredients. We don't have any sand, gravel, or clay. I guess it's time to call weather for some more. Oh, weather, we need some sand. Need inorganic material? I'll erode some fresh sand for you. I'll use rain and wind to break rock into small pieces of sand and gravel and add it to your soil surprise. <gasps> Man, those minerals are going to make this soil so healthy. Thank you, Weather. You are a lifesaver. Our soil surprise would not be complete without some inorganic material. Now, we just need to let the soil surprise decompose and continue eroding the rocks for about a couple hundred years. And then we'll have some great, delicious, and nutritious deep, rich soil. All right! <laughs> we rock! Decomposers and the weather breaking down the soil. 
We're breaking it down. We're breaking it down. We're decomposers and we're breaking it down. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. So, in our skit today, we learned all about the soil cycle. So last time we talked about the water cycle and the life cycle, but we didn't have time to talk about this third extremely important cycle called the soil cycle. So in that skit today, it was kind of like a cooking show, right? And there were a couple characters that were mixing up some deep rich soil surprise. And to make that recipe, they had, they had two bags of ingredients. And I want you to take a minute and think about what were the labels on each of those two bags. The first one started with an O and it said organic. So you guys have probably heard the word organic before, especially if you've ever been to the grocery store in the produce department. Oftentimes there's an organic section and that kind of organic means um, that those produce items were grown without chemicals. So that's all well and good, but today we're talking about a slightly different kind of organic. So in, in science, when we're talking about soil, organic means anything that is or was alive or part of a living thing. So something that is or was alive or part of a living thing. Part of a living. And if you think back to the skit, um, there were all different organic ingredients that were pulled out of that bag. So there might have been a stick, some bark, some leaves, maybe a pine cone or some other kind of cone. Those are all organic things that got added to our deep rich soil surprise. So our other bag, the second bag, was inorganic ingredients. So sounds kind of similar to organic, right? But it has this item in front, this prefix, in, and that changes the meaning of the word. Um, so in is like saying the opposite of. So inorganic means the opposite of organic. Something that was never ever alive. Awesome. So in the skit, the inorganic ingredients bag was actually empty. Right? They didn't have any inorganic ingredients. But then they had a little bit of help from Weather, who came in with the rock and the spray bottle, and they eroded the rock into sand. So that was the inorganic ingredient that went into the pot. Sand. So things like rock, sand, gravel, clay, those are all inorganic. So let's pause for a minute. I'm gonna put my marker down. And let's all get our hands out and shake out our thumbometers. So we have this really special tool called a thumbometer, which can help us decide things. So right now we're gonna play a little game with our thumbometers. And I'm gonna list off a whole bunch of, of things. And you're gonna tell me whether you think those things are organic, give me a thumbs up for organic, or inorganic. Thumbs down for inorganic, okay? So thermometers at the ready. So we'll start easy and then get a little bit harder. So first let's say, how about this, this wooden bookshelf? Organic or inorganic? That's organic, right? Wood is something that um, was alive because it was once a tree. Awesome. Okay, that was too easy. Hmm. How about... How about this plant right here? It is real. It's not a fake plant. Also easy. That's organic, right? Something that is currently alive. How about me? I'm organic. Yeah. How about my, my cotton shirt? Cotton. Well, I know that cotton comes from a cotton plant, so this shirt was once alive or part of a living thing. Totally. How about... What else do I have here? 
Ooh, I have a leather journal. Leather. Hmm. Also organic. Awesome. Yeah, because leather comes from a cow. It's like cow skin. So it was once part of a living thing. How about the paper inside of this journal? Also organic. Came from a living thing. Totally. I don't know though. How about this marker? That's inorganic. It's made of plastic. So plastic we usually consider as inorganic. What about this board? I think it's made, at least the, the outside of this is made of metal. Is metal organic or inorganic? <laughs> Metal's inorganic, right? It comes from a mineral that comes from the earth. So that's not alive. It's inorganic. Cool. So those are just a few examples of some things that are organic versus inorganic. So take a minute and look around you and find some items and ask yourself whether you think they're organic or inorganic. One more question for you guys. What about soil? Is soil organic or inorganic? Think about that one for a minute. It's actually, it's actually both. Soil's got some stuff in it that's organic and some that's inorganic. And we saw that in our skit today, right? When they were adding ingredients into soil, they added things from the organic bag and the inorganic bag. So in order to have delicious, nutritious, deep, rich soil, you've got to have both organic and inorganic. Cool. Glad we cleared that up. Now we're going to move on and talk about something totally different. Something called the FBI. Oh yeah. So you guys have probably heard of the FBI before, right? So you can probably help me figure out what each of these letters stands for. So what would the F stand for in FBI? Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Are you guys thinking of the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're really important, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a different team called the FBI. Yeah, I know. They're actually, I would like to make the case that this team is even more important than that other FBI. They like investigate federal crimes and stuff like that, but this team, these guys are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to create, you guessed it, deep rich soil. So with that in mind, what do you think the F in FBI stands for? Stands for fungus. Oh yeah, fungus. So when you think of fungus, what comes to mind? Maybe a mushroom. Mushrooms are a type of fungus. Maybe mold. If you've ever seen mold before on your bread, that's a type of fungus. I bet you, you all have eaten fungus before, mushrooms aside, because yeast is another type of fungus. I don't know if any of you guys have made your own bread before, but when you do that, you add this stuff called yeast in it, which helps make the bread rise. Totally. So yeast is a type of fungus also. Cool. So fungus is found in all really good soil. It's really important because it helps to break down dead stuff. Cool. So the B, the B in FBI. If we're talking about decomposers, what would the B stand for? It stands for bacteria. Let's write that here. So bacteria is another really important part of the soil that helps to break stuff down. And bacteria are all microscopic, so you can't see them with just your eyes. You need to use a microscope to see them. Totally. So this last part is an I. What do you think the I stands for? It starts with I, N. So we have the same prefix that we did in inorganic, but it's not inorganic. And it's not insects either, if that's what you were thinking. It actually stands for an invertebrate. Invertebrates. 
So an invertebrate is the opposite of a vertebrate. And if you guys lean over and feel your spine or your backbone, your backbone is made up of your vertebrae. So vertebrae are bones that are stacked together like this and they help to hold your body up and give you support. So a vertebrate is anything that has a backbone. So because we learned in means the opposite of, an invertebrate is something without a backbone. So invertebrates are found in deep rich soil too and help to break down dead stuff and turn it into soil. So let's break out those thumbometers again. So everybody shake out your thumbometers, get them ready. We're gonna play another thumbometer game and I'm gonna list out a bunch of organisms, a bunch of animals, and you're gonna tell me whether you think they are thumbs up, a vertebrate, or thumbs down, an invertebrate. So thumbs up, backbone, thumbs down, no backbone. Cool? <laughs> All right, let's start easy. How about us? How about humans? We're vertebrates, we got a backbone. How about um, my dog? Does a dog have a backbone? Yep, they do. So do cats. Okay, you guys are too good. Let's make this a little bit harder. Hmm, what about a fish? Does a fish have a backbone? Yeah, if you've ever eaten a fish, you might have found bones in it before, and they, they do have a backbone. Even though they're, they're pretty slithery in the water. Speaking of slithering, what about a snake? Does a snake have a backbone? That's a hard one. They do. They actually do. They're made up of pretty much all backbone. So we have about 32 vertebrae, I believe, that make up our spine. Snakes have like over 100. So that's why they're able to slither so well, is that they have all of these bones that give them um, that flexibility to slither. So snakes, vertebrae. Hmm. Okay. Let's move on. How about a crab? Nope. Crabs are an invertebrate. They have an exoskeleton, so that means that their structure comes from the outside, from their shell. So crabs, invertebrate. What about an octopus? Also an invertebrate. They're really wiggly and they have hardly any bones. Yeah. So they're an invertebrate. And how about, ooh, a turtle. A turtle is an vertebrate. Yep, almost tricked you there. So like a crab, a turtle also has that shell on the outside, but they also have a vertebrate, a vertebrae that is um, fused to their shell. So that shell just provides them a little bit of extra protection on top. Cool. Oh, let's think of a couple more. How about a shark? They are vertebrae. They have a backbone, but their bones are made of something called cartilage. Cartilage is what makes up your ear and what makes up your nose. So it's a little bit bendier than bone, but it's still a type of bone, and we still call that a backbone. Cool. Um, what about a spider? Spider's an invertebrate. Spider is an arachnid, um, so all arachnids, all insects, things like that are invertebrates. And those are the ones that you usually find in the soil. All those little crawly guys are invertebrates. Awesome. Take a minute and think of some other animals that you know of and ask yourself whether you think they're a vertebrate or an invertebrate. So there's a special way to help remember whether an animal is a vertebrate or an invertebrate. And the way that I do that is this, another acronym. And I'm gonna go over here. And that acronym is FARMB. <laughs> so FARM with a B on the end. And each of these letters stands for a group of animals that do have a backbone. So FARM is representing um, vertebrates, okay? So with that in mind, I'll give you one to get you started. So the F stands for fish. So we listed that one as an example earlier, right? So fish have a backbone. That group 
of organisms, all of the fish, have backbones. So what would that A stand for then? A stands for amphibians. So amphibians are things like frogs and salamanders um, that live partly in the water, they breathe through their skin, and they have backbones. Okay, how about R? We listed an example earlier of R. And R stands for reptiles. Reptiles. So that's lizards and snakes and turtles. Those all have backbones too. The M stands for mammals. That's like us, right? We're mammals. All mammals have backbones. And last but not least, we have this B. And B stands for birds. All of the birds have backbones too. So I'm going to use the black to show that the vertebrates are the ones over here. The different groups make up all of the vertebrates. It spells out farm. So that's a little trick to help us remember. Well, that's it for me today. On to Steelhead for some fun activities all about the soil cycle. See you guys next time. Hey, hey. All right, so thinking about soil cycle, we have one activity today. It's a pretty fun one, pretty simple. And uh, what we're gonna do is, um, hopefully you can do this outside, but it could also be done inside. You're just gonna look for invertebrates. You're gonna look for fungus. You're gonna look for organic material and you're gonna look for inorganic material. All right, so I'm just gonna cruise around wherever you are and start looking for things that um, are, or start with organic versus inorganic. So what kinds of things are organic? Seeds, leaves, uh, plants. Um, sticks, bones, fur, things that are inorganic, things like rocks, water, air. Um, you could do it with, with all kinds of different things. Just figure out what's organic versus inorganic. And as you're looking for things that are organic and inorganic, you could also dig down into some soil. If you have some soil anywhere around, uh, you could just, you know, using a stick or something, you could just start digging down a little bit and start seeing what kinds of things you're finding. Then we're also looking for fungus, things like mushrooms, uh, mold, that's all fungus. Then we're looking for invertebrates, so animals that do not have a backbone. Worms, centipedes, millipedes, spiders, ants, um, all that stuff. So we're slowing down, we're looking close looking around, seeing what kinds of organic and inorganic material we can find, what kinds of fungus we can find, and what kinds of invertebrates we can find. All right, let's go. I think I just found a cool invertebrate. Right at the base of the gutter here, there were some leaves. I pulled them away. And let's check out what I found here. Okay, there's something crawling right there. Might be two invertebrates. Okay, there's one invertebrate. Right there. See that? Oh, there's another one crawling there. Okay, let's see if we can get these. Yeah, there's one. Let's see if we can get these onto a, into a magnifying glass. Okay, do we have our invertebrate in here in this jar? Oh, that's cool. Now look at this invertebrate. It's all rolled up in this ball. But that's just for defense. So as this invertebrate wakes up, it's going to unfold.
And now that we've looked at these, I'm going to put them back right where I found them. Bye bye. Back at this bush here. This is a good spot where we've been able to find some invertebrates. Um, I definitely see some organic material. Here's a little leaf that fell. Leaf, this leaf fell from that tree back up there and floated down and landed in the flowers. And as I'm doing this, I'm putting stuff back where I found it. All right, I'm not, I'm not collecting it and taking it. I'm putting it right back where I found it. All right, I'm back here by this big rock again. And uh, I'm just gonna dig down into the soil here and see what kinds of things. Oh, I'm already seeing organic material. The stick, the tops of uh, some old acorns, bunch of stuff. Oh, more split open acorn. Here's, oh, that's organic too. I don't know what that is, but it, I can tell it's organic. Here's some inorganic material, some rocks. Now I'm going to dig in here, see what we can find. Oh, look. Found an invertebrate. Nice. Organic, organic invertebrates. And remember, this definition of organic is when we're looking at soil. I see some seeds, I see some roots. All kinds of good stuff. All right, and then when I'm done, oh, another rock that's inorganic. I felt water inorganic there's air in there especially since i just turned it up i'm going to put that worm back and put all this organic and inorganic material back the building materials of life are used over and over again we'll look forward to uh, uh, the next video and remember keep calm get your outdoors on